Hello. At the end of the maglev base video, I promised that I'd make another video showing how I put this uh, fixture together a, uh, along with some of the machining steps and maybe a few tricks here and there on my setup. So that's what we're going to look at today. As you can see, I managed to lift the two pound uh, window motor rotor and it has about a 20 minute spin down so I'm pretty happy with this but anyhow let's uh, let's get on with the machining steps I'm starting with the uprights that hold the uh, three-quarter inch ring magnets and I already had this stock squared up so I can't show you the the beginning of that This is an indicator, and I'm going to show you how I use that. But first of all, let me show you this little adapter that I made. Uh, the indicator itself has a 532nd shaft, and that really isn't too conducive to the collet system. So I made this little step set up, and uh, as you see, it can go up into the headstock with uh, almost any standard collet, at least the ones that I have available. This is how I set the piece up so that I can find the center. Uh, given the vise opens up to the same size as the piece. So what I do here is I swing the indicator from one jaw of the vise to the other. And uh, of course when there's a zero on each side then the headstock is uh, right in the center of the piece that's in the vise. Naturally, I'm moving the table a little bit in, in each direction until I finally get the center. Uh, now what I do once I, I'm in center, I set the uh, dial uh, for zero. So I can come back to that any time. Here's another handy tool. This is called a wiggler. I guess you could understand that. <laughs> And uh, when you put something up against it, it stops, and when it stops, it's directly in the center of the spindle. No question about it. So what I've done here is I just lay a scale on the, on the uh, piece up against the stop where the plastic rests again. I'm moving the point over to the inch and three quarters mark. That's where I want to be. And then I come over here, and I'm going to set zero on this handle. Okay, you're saying, why didn't I go back the other way? It would have been shorter to zero. Uh, you really need to worry about the play that's in the screw. I always work with the handles going clockwise so that the uh, readout on the dial is going up. When I finalized the position of the point, I was going clockwise with the handle. Here's something that I consider a must-have on a machine. So. If you're looking for a machine, keep it in mind that you might want this slot on the front of it here, this T-slot. The slot will always let me come back to the same position that I picked up with the wiggler. I'm not going to crank the head up to put a drill chuck in. Um, it's just one hole that I need for a starter hole for the bore. So I'm going to use a ball mill here. And in most cases, that's better than a drill anyhow. Okay, I had to move over to the side to change collets, so here I am going back up against the stop, and I'm back in position again. Lock the table up a little bit, and uh, I'll use this ball mill to put a hole in here to get started. It'll be easier for me to switch pieces in the vise instead of switching cutters in the headstock. I'll uh, be using three cutters, so this will just turn out to be easier. Okay, the uh, starter hole is in both pieces, and I just picked this cutter up out of the drawer. It's nothing special. It's just uh, something I had that's a little bit smaller than the three-quarter inch cutter that I'm going to need to finish with.
this is a three quarter inch cutter and I think that it'll size this bore for me and give me just what I need. I don't need a press fit on the magnets. I want it to slide in there. So we're going to try this. I went down just a little ways. And I'm trying the uh, magnet in to see how it fits. And I think that's about what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these bores with this cutter. Okay, I've uh, turned the piece over on its side and um, this looks familiar right uh, this is how I picked up the other piece and this is how I'm getting the uh, center of this piece now that it's standing up so I'll swing the uh, jaws of the vise and end up in the center of this piece next I'm going to center drill drill and tap a threaded hole for the set screw and that'll be what holds the magnet in place I like to use a little bit of tapping fluid on the tap. All this makes a little bit smoother hole. Now look what I'm doing here. I, I put the tap in a, in a drill chuck here and I'm cranking it in by hand. There's no better way than this to get this perfectly straight. The machine has a tapping cycle but no thanks. I'll just take the chuck off of here and uh, remove the piece and I'll uh, finish tapping this by hand then. I'm working on the bottom part of the base now and uh, remember all these pieces of plastic they're all the same width so whatever I had set for a center it's uh, good for all the other pieces that I'm working on I've set my stops now so that I can mill some clearance slots in the uh, plastic here uh, they'll be for the, the screws that come from the bottom of the base and go into the uprights Okay, here again I'm using a ball mill and I'll just bump up against the stop from one side to the other and uh, work my way down through the plastic. I didn't put any kind of clearance hole in here first for the cutter. I'm just going back and forth and feeding down as I go. Remember I know where the center is so what I'm doing here is I'm dialing off in each direction from the center and uh, what you see here is I'm going past the dimension I need and then coming back up clockwise once again like I explained earlier and uh, I've turned the piece around once in there already I didn't show that but that's what I did so the uh, slots will be going in there symmetrical okay I need uh, elongated counterboards for the heads of the screws and so I found a cutter here that's just a little bit bigger than the screw head and I'll go down over the same positions once again and uh, make the slot that I need. What I'm doing here is I have the cutter sitting on the plastic. I'll press the zero button and then I can uh, move the cutter down as far as I need. So you can picture what's going on there. I'm going back to the uh, vertical pieces now that hold the ring magnets. Uh, notice I have the plastic piece sitting up against a square block and uh, that way the, uh, the part stays in the vise nice and square. And I'm um, indicating on each side of it again to center it up. I'm still using the same zero that I started off with and I'm moving off on each side of this piece here to put the screw holes in uh, same distance as I put the slots in I'll uh, center drill drill and tap on these two locations notice that I'm going deep enough with the center drill uh, that I won't have to uh, do a countersink on the hole before I tap Pretty much all the machining I've been doing so far, my speeds have been around 700 RPMs. Time to get some of this paper off. Uh, this plastic's about 25 years old, I think, so the paper sticks a little bit. It needs a little help from some goo remover. Okay, so I'm putting the base back in here. I need the uh, screw holes in the ends 
to hold the vertical pieces that uh, have the mirrors attached to them. There's a V in the movable jaw of the vise, but I'm not going to uh, depend on that to keep things straight. I'm uh, using this solid square to uh, check everything out and get it perfectly straight. I've picked a dimension from each side of center, uh, center drilled, drilled, and tapped in these two locations. And uh, this will be for holding the upright pieces. I didn't have the uh, end pieces quite ready yet, so I'm going to start by squaring up the ends. Notice I'm conventional milling across the end of the piece, and uh, that means the part is moving into the direction of the cutter. And what I'll do is take a finish cut going back climb milling. The part is moving in the same direction that the cutter is. We'll talk about that later sometime when we have more time. The end result though is a smoother finish. Okay, so uh, now it's time to part the piece. Uh, I have both ends uh, squared up already and I'll just cut it in half right here. The ends of these pieces were already machined square, so they'll go down in the vise. And I just machined the uh, cutoff side here to height, and uh, then we'll be finished with these plastic pieces. Well, almost finished. I need the clearance holes for the screws that are going to hold these pieces to the uh, sides of the base. And it gives me a chance to uh, show you another tool. Uh, this is a, an edge finder, and what happens with this tool is it runs off center until you touch the piece. You move into the piece until the cam centers, and just the instant when it moves off center, you stop, and it's time to mark your zero for that. The cam is 200 thousandths in diameter, so you move over 100 thousandths, and that puts you right on the edge of the part. From there, I only need to move up half the thickness of the base, and I'll put in uh, two clearance holes for the screws that are going to hold these pieces on the end of the base. I only have to remember the distance from center that I dialed off earlier. Okay, we'll get on to working on the shaft. This is a quarter inch piece of uh, surgical stainless, so it has no uh, magnetic properties. And uh, I'm just facing off the end. I'll take a little bit of the burr off. Got a little bippy on the end that needs filing. I machine each end and uh, size the piece to what I want. I've sharpened the lathe tool up to get ready for the next cuts. So let's get on with it. I need to turn a smaller diameter on each end of the shaft so that that will match the uh, inside di diameter of the cylinder magnets that have to go on here. Also the point uh, needs to be put on that will uh, bump up against the uh, little glass pieces on the uprights. What I'm doing here is moving the carriage stop up against the carriage and just snugging the bolt on it. I'm going to move the carriage carefully until the uh, tool bit just hits the end of the piece and the uh, compound where the uh, tool post is is set to zero. So I back up and I crank in to the depth that I want to make my cut stop at. So now once I start my cut I'll run up against the stop and uh, my cut will autom automatically end up to the depth that I need. So I start cutting this diameter and here's my first cut. Now what I'm going to do is, um, well, I'm going to show you a little trick here with these micrometers. They're digital and uh, I found a shaft here that will be the, the size that I want to actually finish the one I'm cutting at. So what I do here is I measure the shaft that I'm using as my sample 
and uh, I lose the piece like this. I'd like to get it back. <laughs> Anyway, I've set the mics to zero on my sample piece. So now when I measure here what I'm cutting, it's not going to tell me what size it is, but rather it'll tell me how much I have to take off to get to the size I want. Normally I'll take a uh, rough cut, a semi-finished cut, and then a finished cut. Now I'm down to about four thousandths. <laughs> Sorry about that, metric friends. And uh, where I'll have to start being a little bit more careful. So uh, I'm taking a, a little starter cut here. And I'll uh, try the magnets on and see what I have. Okay, not quite yet. Too tight. They'd probably press on, but I don't want to press them on, so I we'll have to just uh, give it a lick and promise yet. So I'm barely skinning my test cut, and I'll go ahead and finish to depth with, uh, with this setting, and we'll see what happens from there. So I'm going to check it here with the mics, and uh, it looks like I'm just tiny bit bigger than the sample shaft so I'll try the uh, magnets now before I get in trouble and uh, it looks like they're gonna go on yeah there they go so I'm quitting there I'll just uh, deburr this a little bit and uh, start to get ready to put the points on it was a little tighter going on the front of this, so I'm going to polish the front just a little bit. I'm moving the compound over to 45 degrees, and then I'll uh, cut the points on each side of the shaft. This is one time that you want to get the tool bit as close to center as you can, because you want the sharpest possible point that you can get. The sharper the point, the less friction you will have on the uh, shaft when it runs up against the glass on the uprights. I'm going to smooth it up just a little bit extra with this diamond hone and uh, that should just about finish it. Told you. So this is ready then for a rotor and uh, I actually fit the uh, two pound rotor that you saw at the beginning of the video on that shaft. In case you happen not to see the first video on this fixture base, I added a few of the clips here. This is when I was uh, first putting the base together and putting the shaft in there. I was actually really kind of surprised that it worked. But it did. It's in there. Oh, puppy turned. It's in there. As you can see, I was able to move the ring magnets in close enough to try my other solar rotor on this, and that worked fine. And you can see how this shaft centers up in here. If you look at some of the other videos, you'll see this rotor with the magnets in it, and it worked pretty good. I had some pretty good uh, low current, low voltage runs with it. So if you have okay, time, so go take go. a look. <laughs> Actually, uh, if you made it this far, I'm a pretty happy camper. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, come back again. Good enough, buddy? Hmm? Good enough? My boy. Good boy.